Good morning, my name is Asa Lisa and I'm getting ready for school. Something very exciting is happening at my school. Let's go and see. In Zolengaba, all we've got is teachers. We don't have electricity, we don't have proper a library. Now we're gonna, our life is gonna change and we're gonna have experience more than the others that were there before. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Moves like this, then the second one moves like this. Our learners are, in, are unable to speak English. That becomes a hindrance in their education. I understand that the reason uh, for that is that they are in these remote areas whereby everybody is speaking closer. Now that there will be computers, they will sit there and read a lot through the computer. In the computer, then I think and I'm sure that this will improve uh, their English. Even the community around the school will come and learn how to use computer. This project will do a lot for us. Uh, the electricity is going to be used primarily for a computer lab and they'll have laptop computers, they've already arrived and so the kids will have the laptops here. They'll also have a wireless router for internet learning and it's connected with two other schools that are in this area. They'll be able to use printers and photocopiers in their offices, which up to this point, they're just not able to have. There's been no electricity. Well, the challenges are manifold. You struggle with a very low consciousness or awareness within the community of what solar power and education means, um, of what computing means, of what um, use there is to all of this that we are doing. So the first hurdle that we have to uh, cross and, and somehow get over is to, sp to bring the meaning of what we are doing home. And that means we need at least a certain um, running time within the project where learners are learning and um, cultural exchange is occurring and, and where perhaps new information is um, flowing into the community from outside so that the community can see what the worth and value is of, um, of this whole installation. <laughs> We have had uh, training uh, mainly for educators actually because educators are the ones who are going to uh, teach the learners how to operate these computers and actually how to teach them the system. When we go out, out there from this school, we got to know how to use computer and how to send emails, all that stuff, and a lot of knowledge. When they have to do a research, a kind of a research, they can go online and do a research and research on a, on a certain project, maybe. That's all because we have electricity running and also we have computers. Six 
don't have electricity in South Africa. And there's no way these kids in these rural schools will ever catch up with the rest of the world unless they have access to modern education, computers, etc. This, to me, represented a huge need and an opportunity to bring solar power to rural schools in South Africa. How long have you been using these computers? Mm, maybe three days. Only three days. Yes. Do you like? Yes. Inswell and Cover, there's a media streaming server and a web server. We're sitting with a lot of local content, besides the content that will be fed through from the internet. But to give you an idea that the school that's nearby, a few miles or kilometers away, can watch videos on their laptops that are actually coming off a streaming server here. So th that shows you that there's huge capacity. It's like they've got video on demand and they can choose between the few thousand educational videos that are available. It's state of the art right here. This is a Wi-Fi campus. long time now I've been convinced that the marriage of solar electricity and wireless communications represents one of the most profound ways I can think of to to bring these rural isolated communities into the 21st century when you when you bring connectivity to a rural community and a rural school such as here as well in Kaaba you open up so many possibilities for distance learning uh, for telemedicine we're hopeful that um, by working closely with local partners, including the Department of Education, that we can, we can showcase this project, we can demonstrate the technical, the economic, uh, the social viability of this project, and then the South African government can embrace this model and expand it to the thousands of schools in South Africa that are still left way behind. I've learned a lot. I know how to, to send an email and I know how to do my homework yes. on my own without asking a teacher's help. Click? Yes. You click here. You can't just start right in there. You need to put that. Nothing like this. There were no computers at all. We were all doing things manually. What is happening today is uh, jobs, you only get jobs with a com computer literate. These computers are bringing knowledge to our people, even to the students who are still growing, going to learn about the computers. If you can create a spark, uh, you know, light that, that fire of passion to, to learn and to, and to improve their own lives, nothing can stop these kids, nothing. We're just giving them a tool. A little bit of juice, a little bit of electricity. The rest will be up to them, but I think it's, it's a great beginning. The fact is that the climate is changing and governments and, and citizens are, of the world are under pressure to find an alternative to fossil fuels. We're on the cutting edge. I mean, what we're doing here really represents the future. These kids are the future. Yeah.